Hey guys, welcome back to Dextroy. This is the part of the video on how to root any Android phone. And in this video, we are going to look at how to root any OnePlus, Google, or Chinese, or any other generic Android phone you might have. I will show you two methods to root your phone in this video. The first method is by boot image patching, which is a bit complicated process, but safer. And the other method is by using TWRP, which is easier, but less safe. Please do note that throughout this video, I will make use of terms fastboot and bootloader, and you should keep in mind that they are basically the same thing, and I may use any one of the term to describe the same thing. I have also used terms like terminal and minimal ADB and fastboot, Terminal is basically for Mac and minimal ADB and fastboot is for Windows. So if ever I say that open terminal, that means you should open terminal if you are using a Mac. And if you are using a Windows, then you should open minimal ADB and fastboot and vice versa. Now you must check whether your phone is bootloader unlockable or not. So make sure that you have watched my first video to check if your phone is unlockable or not. Also make sure that you have installed the USB drivers and also have set up ADB and fastboot. If not, then please check the video links in the description. Now if you know that your phone is bootloader unlockable, then you should continue with this video or else you can ask for help in the comment section down below. Please note that unlocking bootloader may void your warranty and will wipe all the data on your phone. So make sure that you have made a backup before proceeding. Now let's see how to unlock the bootloader on your phone. The first thing you need to do is you need to open your phone and then go to settings and then go to about phone and then look for bill number and tap seven times on bill number to enable developer options. Now go back to settings and then go to developer options and enable OEM unlocking. Enter the password if it asks you for a password. Then you will also see an option called USB debugging tap on it to enable it. Now once you have done that, you need to boot your phone into bootloader mode. So for that first power off your phone, now here comes the tricky part. Different phones will have different button combination to boot into bootloader mode. So you need to find the right combination for your phone. For most phones out there, the button combination is volume up, plus power button. While for some other phones, it is volume down plus power button. Or if you don't want to use any button combination, you can just use ADB command to boot your phone directly to bootloader mode. For that, you will need to connect your phone to the PC and then you need to open terminal and then you need to type ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter. And this will ask you for a permission in your phone, then just allow the permission and it should boot your phone into bootloader mode. However, if you are using the button combination, then you need to do is you need to press the power button and volume up button or power up button and volume down button, whichever works for your phone. Now for some phone, this button combination will not directly take them to the bootloader mode. Instead, it will take them to the boot menu. So if you end up in the boot menu, then you should look for the option called boot into bootloader. Then you should use your volume keys to browse through the option and then select the option which says reboot into bootloader and select it with power button and it should boot your phone into bootloader mode. If you have any problem, then please ask me in the comment section down below. Now, once your phone is in the fast boot mode, connect your phone to your PC and make sure that you have already installed all the USB drivers so you don't have any problem connecting your phone. But if you're using a Mac, you don't need to install any drivers. Now, once your phone is connected to your PC, you need to open terminal on Mac or open minimal ADB and fast boot on Windows and type fast boot devices and hit enter. This should return a list of devices that are connected to your computer and you will see your device listed there with an ID. This means that your phone is properly connected to your PC in fast boot mode. And if it doesn't show your device, then it means that your phone is not connected and it could be that your phone is not in fast boot mode or you haven't installed USB drivers if you are using a Windows. Now, once your phone is properly connected, you can also type fast boot get unlock ability. This is to check if your phone is unlockable or not. If it is, then it will return a code of one. If it's not, then it will return a code of zero. Now this command may or may not work for your phone. You don't need to worry about that. You can also type fastboot OEM device info to check all the information about your phone. And as you can see in this example, it says device unlock false 
which means it's not unlocked. It also says that device critical unlock, which means that there's another layer of lock on this phone, which means that we need to unlock both of these layers on this phone. Now, this command may also not work for your phone. It depends on what type of phone you're using. Now, there are three commands to unlock the booter on your phone. For different phones, different commands will work. But the most common command is fastboot oem unlock so you should type fastboot oem unlock and hit enter now this will unlock the booter on your phone and if it doesn't and if it fails that means that you need to use another command then you should type fastboot flashing unlock and you should hit enter now depending on what phone you're using now it may directly start unlocking your phone or it may show you a bootloader unlock screen if you see a bootloader unlock screen then you should use your volume keys to highlight and choose unlock the bootloader or choose something like yes allow bootloader or yes or no or whatever the options your phone is showing you and when you choose the option just press the volume key or power button to confirm your choice and it should start unlocking your bootloader. Now, as we have seen in the example, your device might also have an extra layer of lock, which is critical lock. So for that, you need to boot your phone into bootloader mode again and type fastboot flashing unlock critical and follow the same unlock process as before. Now, when your phone is bootloader unlocked, let's talk about the root methods. Now, there are two ways to root your phone. One is using TWRP and other is without using TWRP. Using TWRP method is easier, but not all the phones have TWRP available for them. And if you can't find TWRP for your phone, then you can still root your phone as long as you have an unlocked bootloader. Now, before we talk about the two methods in detail, we should first find a TWRP for your phone, and then we can decide which method you should use. So first, you need to go to TWRP website and search for your phone using phone name or phone's code name. Now you can download TWRP from here. Now if you don't find TWRP there, then you can simply go to XDA, go to your phone section and look for TWRP or search for TWRP and download it from there. Now if you don't find a TWRP here as well, then you can go to this website and look for TWRP for your phone there. And even if you don't find TWRP for your phone, you will still be able to root your phone using other method. Now let's talk about the two methods. First is using TWRP. You can use this method if you manage to find a TWRP for your phone or if you want to install a custom recovery along with routing your phone. The other method is boot image patching. You should use this method if you didn't find a TWRP or you just want to root your phone without TWRP. Okay, so let's first talk about the boot image patching method. For this method, we would need two files. One is your current boot image file and the other is Magisk Manager. To get the boot image file for your phone, first of all, we need to check which ROM version your phone is running. For that, just go to settings, go to about, and check the build number of your phone. Now you will have to download the firmware file for your phone of the same build number that you are running on your phone. So I will suggest you to update your phone to the latest build version and download the latest firmware build because sometimes it's hard to find older builds. You can find the wrong file from the manufacturer's website. Like for OnePlus phone, you can find it from the OnePlus website. For Google, you can find it from the Google website and etc. But if you are using some Chinese phone or some other phone, then you may find hard to find the firmware for your phone so you can just go to this website and look for your phone and download the file from here or else you can ask for the help in the comment section down below now once you have downloaded the firmware file you need to extract the boot image file from the firmware zip file and then copy the boot image file to your phone. I will recommend you to copy it to the download folder. Now go ahead and download Magis Manager app APK and install it on your phone. Then open Magis Manager app and tap on install, then install, then select and patch a file and select your stock boot image file. Magis Manager will install Magis to your boot image and store it in the download folder as magispatch.img. Now all you have to do is copy this file from your phone to your computer. Now boot your phone into fast boot mode again and connect your phone to your PC and then open the terminal on Mac or open minimal ADB and fast boot on Windows and type fast boot devices and hit enter to check if your phone is properly connected. Now you have to type fast boot flash boot 
and the path of the magisk patched image file. If you cannot type the path, just drag and drop the file to the terminal and it should enter the path of the file automatically. In my case, I open the terminal in the same folder as where the image file is, so I don't need to type the whole path. Now hit enter and it should start flashing the file. Now once that's done, you need to type fastboot continue and hit enter. And that's it. Now it will reboot your phone and your phone should be rooted. Now once your phone boots, up, open Magisk Manager and you should check and verify if it's rooted. Okay, so that was the first method. Now let's talk about the second method which is rooting using TWRP. Now before we begin, I just want to make clear that in this method, I will only show you the way to root your phone using TWRP and I may not show how to install TWRP as it's not the purpose of this video and the process can get a bit complicated considering different type of phones out there. So I will cover the complete process of installing installing TWRP in another video. In this video, we will only focus on reading process rather than installing the process of TWRP and will only cover as much as needed. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you have already downloaded TWRP image file for your phone on your computer. You also need to download Magic zip file. You can either download this on your phone or on your PC. Also download the Magic Manager app just in case. All the links will be in the description. Now what you need to do now is you need to boot your phone into fast boot mode as we did before. Connect your phone to your computer using USB cable and open terminal and type fast boot devices and hit enter to check if your phone is properly connected. Now type fast boot, boot and the path of the image file. You can also drag and drop and it will automatically enter the path of the image file. Now hit enter and it should boot your phone into TWRP recovery. Now if it doesn't boot your phone into recovery or it gives you an error while running this command, it means that this method will not work for your phone and you should follow the previous method. Now do note that since we use the boot command to boot into recovery, it only temporarily booted us to TWRP recovery and it didn't install it. So once you boot into recovery mode, you will see screen like this, which says unmodified system partition. Here you need to select keep read only. Now there are three ways to flash magic zip file. One is via PC using ADB sideload, other is flashing magic from internal storage of your phone, and other is using OTG. To install magic from PC, first go to TWRP, go to advanced, and go to ADB sideload, and swipe to start sideload. And make sure your phone is connected to your PC. Open terminal and type adb siloed and path of the magic zip file. Hit enter and it should start flashing the magic zip file to your phone. If your magic zip file is in the internal storage, go to install and browse for magic zip file. Select zip file and swipe to flash it. Once it's done flashing, your phone is rooted and now you can reboot your phone. You can also confirm root by checking Magis Manager app on your phone and if the app is not there, then you can easily install it via APK file that you have downloaded before. So that's it guys, I hope you found this video useful and were able to root your phone. If you encountered any problem, do not hesitate to ask anything in the comment section down below and I will try my best to help you out. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos where I talked about how to install Exposed Framework which is used for installing powerful tools and customization and other video which where I talked about how to install Substratum for theming your phone and another video where I talked about how to install custom ROM. So make sure you check out those videos as well. And for more awesome videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.